Now that we've become familiar with different bases in terms of our numbering system, we want to look at being able to write values using different bases. So in our first video of this series, we're going to look at decimal expansions, and decimal means a base 10 expansion. So we have a theorem that says if b is an integer and greater than 1, then if n is a positive integer, it can be expressed uniquely in the form. So again, n is just going to be the number that we are dealing with, and it must be positive. And we can write it in the form a sub k times b to the k plus a sub k minus 1 uh, times b to the k minus 1, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all the way down until we get to the end. And essentially what all of this means is because I'm dealing with base 10 and B is my base, in this case, if I'm looking at a decimal expansion, which is a base 10 expansion, I'm saying my first digit is times 10 to the zero because that would give me 10 to the zero would be one, so six times one. My next digit over would be times 10 to the first. So this digit is in the tens place, then that would be 50, so I would be adding 50 to six. This digit, the four, is in the hundreds place, or 10 squared. The digit of zero is in the thousandths place, and the digit of one is in the 10 thousandths place. So if I did a decimal expansion of this, which would be pretty easy because it's already in base 10, my decimal expansion would look like this. I would say 1 times 10 to the fourth plus 0 times 10 to the third plus, and again, I'm just looking right over here, 4 times 10 to the second plus 5 times 10 to the first plus 6, and I could put times 10 to the 0, but notice up here in our uh, formula or our expression, we don't really need to take a times 10 to the 0 because we always know that that last term is really just going to be multiplied by 1. So this would be my answer um, if they asked for the decimal expansion. So let's look at a binary to decimal expansion. So binary obviously is base two, and what we're looking at here is a binary expansion, or excuse me, a decimal expansion, meaning we want to go from base two to base 10. So again, we know that each of these base, or each of these place values represents two. So I could do the same thing I did before. Um, and say 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, etc. But really, I'm just going to number these so that we know exactly what we're dealing with. So if I were going to write out 1011, 1101 in base 2 as a decimal expansion, I would take my first value, which is 1, I would say 1 times 2 to the 7th plus my next value up here is 0. 0 times 2 to the 6th plus my next value is 1. 1 times 2 to the 5th plus again just going in order 1 times 2 to the 4th plus next digit is 1 times 2 to the third. So notice these numbering underneath is just my exponent each time. Next digit is a 1, so 1 times 2 squared. Next digit is a 0, so 0 times 2 to the first. Last digit is a 1, so I can just say plus 1, or if I wanted to, 1 times 2 to the 0, which would still give me 1. Now in this case, it just said give me the decimal expansion and that's it. And so I could be done right here. But if I wanted to, remember I could go ahead and find the solution, the final answer. So here this is 1 times 128. And again, you could just go straight to you know finding the solution. 
um, but I'm going to go ahead and write this out just so we're clear on exactly what's happening. I've got 0 times 64 uh, plus 1 times 32 plus 1 times 16 plus 1 times 8 plus 1 times 4 plus 0 times 2 plus 1. And if I add all of those up together, unless I've messed up my math, I end up with 189. So my solution for the decimal expansion is 189, but again, this is sort of the expansion and then this is the result. So it's good to find both of those, so don't just stop short, but go uh, find both of those. So the same way that we just did for a binary, to decimal expansion. Now we're going to look at an octal to decimal expansion. And of course, octal means the base is 8. So here we have the number 4072, um, base 8. I want to turn that into a base 10 number. So I'm going to go about it in the same way I did before. And remember, I start on the right, and it's just a good little numbering system to help you know exactly what we're dealing with here. And the numbers that I've written beneath, again, are going to be the exponents on the base of 8. So if I'm writing 4072 base 8 into a decimal expansion, I'm going to say I have 4 times 8 to the third, because 4 is my first digit and 3 was that exponent, plus 0 times 8 squared plus 7 times 8 to the first, plus 2, and again, you could put times 8 to the 0, but we don't have to. So again, these are just my exponents, and then up here, these are the numbers that I'm multiplying. So just as I did before, you can show that step in between if you want to show um, that this is 4 times 512, and 0 times 64, and 7 times 8 plus 2, or you could just go straight to this step, which is to find 2048 plus 0, plus 56, plus 2. And then my final answer, of course, would be 2106. And again, this is base 10, so it's okay to go ahead and put that base 10. Uh, keep in mind when we're dealing with base 10 that it's not necessary, so it's just as acceptable to just write 2106 as we normally would. Now let's look at a hexadecimal expansion. Now hexadecimal, again, is something we haven't dealt with before. And this one gets a little bit tricky because we're dealing with 16. So hexadecimal means that we're dealing with a base of 16. And the problem with this is obviously when we're looking at one digit numbers, we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, but when we get to 10, we don't have a one digit number because if I wrote 10, that would be two digits. So that's where you can see I've written this row out for you that 10 would be A, 11 would be B, 12 would be C, 13 would be D, 14 would be E, and 15 would be F. So these are the values that we're going to use for hexadecimal to decimal expansion. But the good news is it's really just exactly the same thing. So to find my solution, I'm going to just recopy this over here. And again, this is base 16. And just as I did before, I didn't leave myself a lot of room. I apologize, but this would be 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And so I would start with 2 times 16 to the 4th, because I'm using my first value and then the exponent. Plus, and now I can use A, but A is not A. A represents 10. 
So I'm going to say 10 times 16 to the third plus, and now I have E. E, again, represents the value of 14. So 14 times 16 to the second plus 0 times 16 to the first plus B, and B is 11. And so that is my expansion. Again, I can use my calculator to calculate all of these separate values and then at the end add them all up to find my final solution. Obviously I've done this ahead of time so I know all of the values. And when I add up all of these values, I get 175,627. Again, keep in mind, I could write that base 10 just to be clear that it's base 10, uh, but it's not wrong if I don't put the base 10 because that's how we generally do things with base 10 numbers.